I will be telling you all the story, the true story, of the time I once spent nine days in the wilderness as a fugitive from federal law enforcement. <laughs> Our story begins naturally in Canyon City, Colorado, with, with a population of just over 16,000 is not much of a city at all, leaving you to wonder why they even have city in the name to begin with. I suppose in this context it's one of those words that doesn't really mean anything, but they slide it into the name to make it sound cooler. <laughs> like calling the Cumberland Plateau the mountain. <laughs> or calling a local reservoir Lake Dimmick. Or calling a group of people living in the basement of the dorm the green house. <laughs> It's old. <laughs> you know. Well, Canyon City is known for being the town with 13 prisons. Why any town would need more than one is beyond me, but I think the rationale between, behind having a baker's dozen of penitentiaries all right next to each other is that if someone were to try and escape by digging a tunnel underneath their cell, more likely than not, they're just going to wind up popping back up in another prison. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, I suppose I jumped the gun starting off my story with prisons. I should establish first how I became a fugitive in the first place. Well, when I was 18, I spent the summer working as a canoe guide uh, in the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness near Ely, Minnesota. So if this is Tennessee, this is Kentucky, and Indiana, and Illinois, and Wisconsin, and Minnesota, I was here. <laughs> and it's really a magical place. Thousands of lakes, thousands of portages, acres upon acres of boreal forest. There's moose, bear, bald eagles, northern pike, walleye, smallmouth bass, and of course, Lots and lots of loons. <laughs> now loons are one of those things where if you leave out certain details and emphasize others, well they start to sound like something completely else entirely. <laughs> loons have beady red eyes. They're masters of the air and water, being able to fly, <laughs> swim, and dive. They swallow their prey whole. They're spine-tingling howls echo through the night. <laughs> and it's even said that the meat from the common loon, cooked or raw, cannot be digested by even the most daring of pledges. <laughs> <laughs> In reality, the common loon is an aquatic bird about this big. They're a dime a dozen. But what have I really said so far? Surely this far into my story, I would at least establish the inciting incident that led me to flee from officers of the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. <laughs> <laughs> well, lost my train of thought. <laughs> Fortunately, being in the Boundary Waters, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> uh, the problem with telling this story is that I didn't know that I'd done anything wrong until the feds were already nine days on my trail. <laughs> Being in the Boundary Waters, there wasn't a chance they'd find me. Uh, literally nobody knew where I was. I uh, could take a crew out for a six-day trip on a Sunday, and as long as I brought at least 90% of the back <laughs> on a Saturday, nobody would ask any questions. I could be in another country for all they cared. And more often than not, I was. <laughs> Legally, of course, we always made sure to have our remote area border crossing permits signed and approved by a Canadian Forest Service ranger and would proceed to portage our canoes right on into the wilderness of Ontario. I did it all the time. Um, the only thing you had to do other than that is make sure that you check back into the US upon your return. And I did that too. You could do it right on your phone. Well. 
I just got back from a nine day trip on the American side when I found that I had an eight day old email in my mailbox. <laughs> the message read as follows. <laughs> Thank you for your recent USCBP Rome trip submission. Unfortunately, your USCBP Rome trip ID 87020 has not been approved and you may not enter the US at this time. You may contact the nearest port of entry for information or clarification. Sincerely, U.S. Customs and Border Protection. <laughs> Could not enter the U.S. What? I'd been here for over a week. <laughs> if I turned myself in, what were they going to do? Deport me to Canada? <laughs> well, it seemed I had two options. Confess my trespassing to the ranger station, or live the rest of my life as a fugitive. <laughs> On my way to the ranger station. <laughs> I was thinking over how I would tactfully propose my predicament to the customs officer. Surely it had just been some sort of glitch in the system. Any human could understand that. But to my dismay, I found that just as John Henry the steel driver had narrowly bested the steam drill at the cost of his life, and just as Paul Bunyan the lumberjack had been narrowly bested by the invention of mechanized uh, logging equipment, so too had the noble occupation of customs agent been automized. The office, which I'm sure was sufficiently drab in its heyday, was now completely empty. But for a single iPad-powered stand <laughs> with digital buttons and a little unblinking eye that watched your every move. It is here that my dramatic tale of international proportion comes to a gripping conclusion. <laughs> I typed in my name. <laughs> Typed in my date of arrival. Typed in my method of transportation. I decided I had nothing to declare. <laughs> the little hourglass started spinning. And then it read, Welcome back to the United States. Enjoy <laughs> your stay. And I walked out of the ranger station a free man. 